Welcome to General Structures 2 on Lateral Forces, Lesson 4 on the Earthquake Design Example. That's on page 112. And it says that the following is a step-by-step -step design of a small commercial building in Seismic Zone 4, shown on the following two pages, to resist earthquake forces. The exam will not have a problem as lengthy or complex as this. However, if you study this design example, it should help you understand the basic principles of earthquake design. All right, so we're just going to go step by step. I'm going to assume you have this. And it says that the loads are as follows. Roof live load is 20 PSF. I shall go ahead and write these down. Equals 20.0. PSF, roof dead load, so total, it has a bunch, it has roofing is 3.0, plywood sheathing is 1.5, wood framing is 2.5, insulation is 2.0, ceiling is 3.0, mech and electric, mechanical and electric is 2.0, and miscellaneous is 2.0, so you have a total of 16.0 PSF. And then you also have, well, actually, that's all it gives you. So that's your roof dead load, and that is not including 8-inch uh, concrete walls, which that's, you can if you look on the next page, on page 113, and let's look around a little bit more. Where does it say we have 8-inch concrete walls? doesn't really say we have 8 inch concrete walls except right below there it says dead load of 8 inch concrete walls equals 8 inches divided by 12 inches times 150 pounds per cubic foot and that gives you let's just say that's the roof dead load and then your concrete wall dead load equals 100.0 PSF so the first thing it wants us to do is, it says base shear. That's a B, not a D. Base shear. And it says, what is the total base shear? And the total base shear, if you remember, is V. And hopefully you also remember that ZIC, RW, and then times the weight. All right, and we can just go ahead and start right here, and this is what the answer is going to be. Um, it said we're in seismic zone 4, and if you remember that it is on page 82, you see seismic zone 4 gives you a Z equals 0 0.4. Then we go on to I. We're going to assume this is a commercial building. I'm going to assume I equals 1.0, and you can find that on what page was that on? Repro reproduced, obviously, from the UBC. Remember, this is UBC design code that we're doing. It says page 84, the table on page 84, which you can get is the table 16-K. I'm just going to go ahead and assume it's 1.0, and typically we will, unless you have a reason not to. Uh, what do we have next? This is C. So we get C, and if you remember, C, you can do a minimum C over RW, or you can go ahead and calculate it out. If you remember, C equals, what is it equal, 1.25 S over T to the two-thirds, and T is your period, and you get T equals C T H N over three fourths. Two to three fourths rather. Alright, and C T you can get from a table. And if you go to C T on page eighty three, you can see that it says C T equals zero point oh three five for steel bone resisting frames, not that. C T equals zero point oh three for reinforced concrete moment resisting frames and a citric brace frames. We know we don't have eccentric eccentric brace frames. And then 0 0.02 for all other buildings. Let's go ahead and assume it's a 0 0.02. Uh, 
02 for CT and then time the height HN is the height of the building and it is 14 feet and that's not including the parapet that's what two three fourths so let's calculate that 0.02 times 14 foot to the three fourths equals 0 0.145 and that's usually going to be in seconds. And it, that's assuming we use foot right there. We'll give you seconds. 0 0.145 seconds. All right, so you go ahead and put that up here. That's your T, but we also need an S. You can also get S from the table 16-J, which is repeat, uh, provided for you on page 83 of the study guide. And we don't know anything about soil, so we assume 1.5 for S. Yeah, I don't even need to do that. We'll just go ahead and put it up here. 1.25, and we said 1.5 since we don't know anything about the soils. 0 0.145. And that's two to two thirds. Let's go ahead and put it uh, into the calculator. Two thirds. And I get 6.79. And that's C, and that's going to be unitless. If you remember, that's more of the times the force of gravity, as I like to think about it. So you want to hit this. Actually, no. I'm, I'm wrong. C is just your coefficient. And then you put this all into here. We actually need RW now. So what does RW equal? and it's the type of brace frame or the type of frame system you have and I believe that it is on page yeah, there's a table that has your RW values and here it is on page 90 reproduced for you from the UBC uh, we don't know exactly what type of system this is we know it's not a moment resisting it's not a dual system building frame system or bearing wall system I would say it's most likely a bearing wall system let's go in it's not a light frame now that, that would be more wood to type shear walls concrete that probably looks the best light steel frame bearing walls no braced frames where bracing carries gravity loads and I would say no in this because we don't really have any bracing on there so I would use number 2a and that's our RW of 6 now we have everything, but if you remember the C value right here, it actually is it's it's two, the max you can use is max equals I think it was two point seven five. And that's it gonna be in the code where you can find that. Um I think it was on page eighty three. Yes, page 83. And the max C you can use is 2.75. And that's mostly going to be for your lower periods and your shorter buildings. So you'll have higher C's, and therefore you just use a max of 2.75. And now we have everything we need. So let's kind of go back up here. V equals Z, which is a 0 0.4. I, 1.0. 2.75 equals C over 6 W. And W is, well, let's just leave it as W right now. 0.4 times 1 times 2.75 divided by 6 is 0 0.183 times your W. And your W in this case is the entire building is your dead load. So let's figure out what the dead load is the entire building. We have don't have to worry about any floors but you go ahead and do the walls and I'm not going to discount and I don't know if they do in the study guide or not. It doesn't seem to be what I'm looking at. I'm not going to discount for the openings in the the wall the the doors. I'm going to no it's not doors because they're 15 foot wide but maybe they're uh, type garage door type systems overhead doors. I'm not going to account for those. I don't think they have either. So our total dead load, let's look at this. We have what? And it's seven foot, 17 foot tall. It's, well, first let's say this. We have 
the roof. Let's do the roof first. Roof. Okay, so we have the roof dead load is 16 PSF. Now we gotta figure out what is the square footage of the roof. And it is, looks like it's gonna be the inside, which is 61.4 divided by, or subtract out 16 inches, that's gonna make 60 foot. I took 61, 61 foot 4 minus 8 inches the wall thickness times 2 divided by 12 and gives you 60. And then the other wall is 151, so that's going to be 150 foot. And you should get an amount of 144 kips. And you can divide this by 1,000 to get it to kips. And I had 144, uh, yuck. 144 kips for your roof load. And then you have, let's do wall load. Your wall, your total wall is what? It's 100 PSF. Or 0.1 KSF. Let's go ahead and divide it by 1,000. I like working in kips. And let's go ahead and look at the wall load, or our wall sizes. And this time we want to go outside to outside of one of them, and then we want to go inside. So let's do 60 again, and then we'll do out to out of 151.33 foot. And then we want to multiply each by two, because we have two of each wall. I hope that makes sense. And we're going to do 0.1 times 60 times 151.33 times two. And I get, actually if you look, I did that incorrectly. I forgot to multiply it by the height of the wall. If you would follow the, that's P, C, P, S, F. Yeah. Okay, I messed this up. <laughs> I need to do this over again. Alright, so, if you'll remember, we need to add these. Not remember. But I did it incorrectly. Because you're going to have 60 foot plus 151. That's going to be two sides of the wall times two of the other two sides times the height of the wall. And you're going to get, this is PSF. So the it ends up working out. So we would have what? 0 0.1 times, parentheses 60 plus 151.33 times 2 times 17. And as you can see, you can make stupid mistakes like I just about did. And I get... 718.5, let's say, kips. And it might be easier for you to just say, you know, 0 0.1 KSF times 17 foot times 60 foot times 2. And that gives you one, like, that's your, what, south wall, north walls? Those are your east and west walls. And then you do the same thing, 0 0.1 KSF, SF times 17 foot, times 151.33, times 2. And that should, you add those together, it should get you this number right here. All right, now what, what, what do we need to do here? So we have our dead load. We can add these together. We get our total dead load, 144 plus 718.5, and you get about 600, 862. 5 kips. 862.5 kips. And that is your total V load. Or your total dead load, let's say. And then to get, so that's this right here. That's DL. And you want to multiply it by your 0 0.183 of that W. So let's go ahead and do that. Equals 0 0.183 times 6. No, 8. 62.5 kips, and you end up getting 0.183 times 8. 862.5 equals 157.8 kips. At, and we compare that, and it says 157,842. So 157.8 is the same thing. We have kips, they have pounds.
All right, I will see you on part two of this same video.